you know, man, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, after that Chicago White Sox series, I've mentioned this a number of times already, but I'll say it again. After that Chicago White Sox series, I, I the thumbnail to one of my uh, podcasts, the thumbnail to the to the to the YouTube edit of them was like, "Is all hope lost?" question mark. And like almost immediately when I dropped the episode on YouTube, I get this comment. So I think that some dude were soliloquy um, saying like how Yankees fans are overreacting. You'll be fine. You'll make the playoffs, which first of all, that wasn't my point. The point is like the Yankees is all hope lost as a world series contender. But like the funny thing is I responded and I'm like, no, I agree with you. Cause if you listen to the episode, I said, I think the Yankees would be fine without Aaron judge. I think they find a way to 95 wins They'd find a way to take second place in the division and go from there. This team is not making the playoffs. I've given up hope that this team's going to win 90-something games. Like, this team, I think this team is, is just, I just think what they are. They are what they are. They're a bad baseball team. Um, so I just thought that was funny. I was even wrong. The guy who has... Um, at times been labeled as a, as a pessimist, was overly optimistic about this team. So that should say a lot about this 2023 Yankees team, shouldn't it? Let's talk. Yankees, uh, Rockies. Yanks dropped two out of three. Let's get into it. First episode back from break. Let's go. Welcome to BD4, an RJ Carbone podcast. BD4, where there is no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on occasion. BD4 is a five-star show on Apple Podcasts, also available in video format on YouTube and Spotify. So thanks for stopping by, and we hope you enjoy the show. Champion of the world, turning, looking, see ya! Anthony for three, Creates and shows some dexterity as well with the left hand. Yankees win! All right, here we are, episode 540 of the podcast. Welcome to BD4. I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to BD4. Well, there's no better way. To get your Yankees and Knicks analysis, we also do MMA. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on occasion. Um, it's the off season, so we're taking it. We usually cleanse from the teams we cover in the off season, so we haven't done any Knicks. Um, I want to do some MMA because there's been a lot going on in, in the UFC. So maybe we'll have an MMA episode out soon. The next pay per view, if I have time. Um, I know I've been very, very inconsistent with that but again that's just on occasion we cover that um here on the show but um yeah we're talking Yankees in this one and this team just continues to uh play exactly as to how they think they are like this team thinks they're so I don't know where I was fucking going with that they continue to play mediocre baseball and it's kind of the, the mentality they carry like this team I feel like they're so robotic. We know they don't believe in hot. Maybe that's why they never get hot. Momentum does not exist with this Yankees team. We've seen that so many times this year. Where they just don't believe, they don't get hot. There is no such thing as momentum with your 23 Yankees. We've had what? One single five-game win streak on the year? Is that it? Because it feels like most of the season, the Yankees are having trouble stringing together more than three wins. They don't sweep. We had two great wins. Here's an example of the Yankees not ever being able to find momentum. They had two, this is a recent one, they had two excellent wins 
against Baltimore pre-All-Star break. Remember that? Harrison Bader, a couple of big doubles in that series. Two great wins in a four-game set. Then what happens? They lose the next two games, and then they go on to get bitched by the Chicago Cubs two out of three with a horrific game three. You have the All-Star break done after that. Took a few days. You fire Lawson. You bring in a guy like Casey. Friday night you come back. Your new toy is on the mound against a terrible Rockies team. Don't matter. Nope. You lose 2-3. or three. So I just don't think this team gets any momentum ever because they don't believe in this shit. They think the game, the way they run, is very robotic. They think everything is calculated and everything is scientific. And it's, I just, I don't see this team doing it. This is not a Yankees team that's going to win shit. Before we get into the thick of it, uh, some injury stuff. Aaron Judge, if you give a shit about updates that don't matter, uh, he was seen on the field this series. In the cages and and, in the outfield pregame, he says he feels something, not pain, but he feels something. So take that as whatever you want to take it as. Um, I, again, I'll say this. I don't care about injury updates. The only update I want to hear from it when it's regarding an injured player is when the guy is going to be back in the baseball field and the Yankees still don't have a timeline for us, either because they're incompetent or they want to keep selling tickets. Uh, but I'm sorry, man. If you're Aaron Judge, at this point, like you got to man up and be there for your team. You're the captain. DH, play through it. Get surgery in the offseason. Be the man. You're the captain. Be there for your team. Let's go, pal. It's a toe. It's a toe. It's a toe. I don't care how offended you are that I just said that. Anybody listening, it's a toe. Uh, Josh Donaldson is hurt. Thank God. Oswald Peraza is up. Took a damn injury for it to happen. I'm still shocked they put Donaldson on the 10 day and they didn't go 60. They had, they, I guess they still have a perfect opportunity to kind of do the whole, uh, what was it, Jacoby Ellsbury thing with him. And if they don't end up doing that, I swear to Christ, if I have to see this guy with uh, take another at-bat for the Yankees, I'm, I'm going to lose my shit. Let's talk about this series, run through these games, and then we'll have a few talking points we want to go over. The first game of this series, the Yankees lost 7-2. Carlos Rodon took the mound against some bum with a 7 ERA. The game started well for the Yankees. Glaber Torres a base hit. Giancarlo Stanton goes deep. It's 2-0 Yankees after the top of the first. Wow, look at us. Coming out the gate hot. That was it for the Yankees from there. The bats went quiet the rest of the way. Carlos Rodon struggled. He was bad. And uh, the bullpen was no better. And so the Yankees lost this game again, seven to two. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to say Rodon's in trouble. It's his second start. But he wasn't good. Five innings, four hits, four runs, two walks, six strikeouts, a home run allowed, and he took the loss. There was a lot of hard contact once again, especially early on, uh, like in the second inning. Fly out, walk, base hit, base hit, mound visit, fly out, double, 3-2 Colorado. And then the fourth inning comes, you get the home run right away to Yankee killer Randall Gritchick, who is the newest bargain bin um, target of Brian Cashman. Puts the Rockies up 4-2. Uh, Rodon did rack up some strikeouts. That was good to see. He had six of them, so that was a positive. I was a little, you know, he had two only in the first outing, and then he started this game, but not much. But then he started racking them up because I want to see the swing and miss stuff. That's what he is. Uh, But basically in this game, he was bad because the slider 
The slider was flat. It was awful. Very hittable. It was batting practice. Um, and his fastball was was all he was missing on that outside part of the plate too. He wasn't getting that outside pitch. Uh, he was throwing it hard though. He was throwing. I even saw some ninety nine in there with the four seamer. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a good outing. And, and you could throw in the the course field excuse if you want. Uh, but that doesn't fly with me because the dude with a literal seven ERA shut the fucking Yankee bats down that same exact night. So uh, the Yankee pen, uh, I knew he was in the seventh and eighth. It was King and Abreu, and they were both bad. Uh, King ended up throwing 41 pitches. And the bats, two runs on eight hits, a walk, seven strikeouts, one for seven in scoring position. Glaber Torres leads the team with three hits, Stanton with two RBIs, and Stanton had a home run. Stanton, two hits, also doubled. Uh, DJ, two hits in this game. The Yanks put two on in the ninth inning, and then with no uh, with two outs, Anthony Volpe ripped one to left field, but it was caught on a nice play going up by the left fielder, whoever that was out there. And that was really it. The Yankees lost the first game of the series 7-2. to two. Um. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> As I chew ice into the mic for some ASMR. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's it's what a way to to welcome everybody back from break is by taking a loss to a terrible. Terrible, 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 terrible Rockies team. Second game of the series took place on Saturday night. And the Yankees would lose, uh, they would win this game. This was a rare win by the Yankees, 6-3. to three. Clark Schmidt going up against Siebold. Another pitcher who has struggled this year. Top of the first, you get the Glaber Torres leadoff triple. That could have been caught, but it wasn't. Uh, Stanton then ends up getting him home. Uh, the Rockies answer in the bottom of the first when the Clark Schmidt, uh, when Clark Schmidt balks the runner home from third base, um, and then the Yankees erupt in the second inning for five runs. DJ LeMahieu doubles, you get the one out bloop single from Harrison Bader. Anthony Volpe walks to load the bases. Uh, you got the mound visit, and then Higashioka hits the sacrifice fly to right field. Glaber. Base hit, scores another. And then Stanton with the big three-run bomb to the opposite way to put the Yankees up 6-1. to one. Uh, Schmidt ends up going 6-plus, and then he leaves the game after allowing uh, a solo homer in the top of the seventh inning. Peralta got the seventh and did his job there. Canely got the eighth. And then, um, you know, Canely allowed his first run of the season. Uh, although he has struggled, he, he struggled again today, struggled in this game, and he did struggle in the previous outing, letting up some inherited runs. Um, Volpe also made an excellent play at shortstop in the inning. And then the Yankees get Clay Holmes to close it out and win this game 6-3 to three in the uh, in the ninth inning of the game. And again, they win this one 6-3. Uh, the Bats, six runs on eight hits, three walks, seven strikeouts, three of 11 in scoring position. DJ 3 of 4, two doubles, Glaber 2 for 5, a triple, an RBI, Stanton 1 for 3, a home run, a walk, four RBIs, Higashioka, an RBI. Uh, Clark Schmidt ends up going six plus innings, two runs, three hits, a walk, eight strikeouts, a home run, and the win. I got to give the guy credit, man, for really straightening himself out. He's found something. Um, he's... At times, ditched the cutter. At times, he's ditched the curveball like he did in this game. He was mainly, uh, I would say he was mainly slurve cutter in this one, if you want to call it a sweeper, whatever, slider, that pitch, and cutter is what he went with in this game, and he was very effective with it. He wants 38 pitches with the slider, uh, 27 cutter, 17 two seam, 7 curve, 3 change. Um, but yeah, he was mainly sweeper slider, 
Uh, you got to give him credit. He's, he's found something. He's got a 339 ERA since May. That's 14 games, 13 starts, uh, and a 283 ERA in his last 10 starts. So he's 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 doing his job. Um, he's become a, a part. You know, you can either use him as a trade piece, or you can use him and, and see him as a as a future piece to this rotation for years to come. Um. So yeah, I mean that, that's. That's as much as I really want to talk about this game. They won. You know, it's hard to talk a, a positive, even even if it's a win when, you, when you're talking about a series where the Yankees dropped two out of three. I mean, this was, this should have been an easy sweep. This should have been an easy sweep for them. Um, but it wasn't, of course. So they lose, or lose the series. So they win the second game. Uh, and in game three, we'll, we'll touch on that right now. They lose this one eight to seven in eleven innings. Oh, was this a game? Um, yeah. Garrett Cole going up against another bum with with an ERA of seven or close to seven. Bottom of the second inning, Cole gives up another one of his patented home runs. There was only a solo shot. So it was one nothing Colorado, uh, but then he was very sharp. He was very good the rest of the game. He ended up going six innings. Um, the Yankees score off of some small ball in the top of the sixth. IKF a base hit. The Rockies start throwing the ball around. Uh, Volpe RBI ground out, and the Yankees go up 3-1. to one. Uh, Bottom of the eighth, Tommy Canely struggles again. Uh, Clay Holmes comes in with the bases juiced. He does not have it. Allows the grand slam. Um, Colorado goes up 5-3. to three. I texted my buddy before this inning and I go great win I, I think I even put it on social media and so I jinx it um, top of the ninth comes the Yankees do answer back Glaber hits a he, he picks up a base hit that scores a run the Rockies again throwing the ball around some more Bader sack fly scores another to tie it up at five and then top of the 11th you get the two rookies contributing Oswaldo Cabrera with the base hit. He had a big day. And then Oswald, Oswald Peraza in his first game back singles. Another run in for the 7-5 lead. And after this, once again, I text my buddy, hey, this was a good win. Because there's no way the Yankees managed to screw this one up as well. Well, then came the bottom of the 11th. Um, Nick Ramirez, of all human beings, is the guy who comes into the game. And he allows the home run to tie it at 7. Ramirez is pulled from Arnaccio, who then comes in to lose the game for the Yankees, issuing the walk-off home run to another random. Um, Ramirez to Jones and, and uh, Marinaccio to somebody else. Uh, and the Yankees, just like that, lose their first series back from All-Star break against a, again, Terrible, shitty, abysmal, last place, sub 400, 400 baseball team. Um, and this was a very frustrating loss. Um, and how did they lose this one? The same way they always lose. The bats, timely hitting, fundamentals, and poor management. We could start with the bats, and we will credit them for having a, you know, a good first series back with Sean Casey, all that, blah, blah, blah. Maybe we'll touch on that in a second. But they did embarrass themselves in parts of this game despite the seven runs. Because the pitcher who started this game for Colorado had an ERA of 6.89 entering the contest. So by default, what does he do against this putrid Yankees lineup? Five innings, no runs, three hits, couple walks, no home runs. The Yankees continue to not hit starting pitching. They are abysmal against starting pitching. They brought a terrible approach, a lot of one pitch, one out. Cheap, lazy ground ball outs. And they just embarrassed themselves against an absolute bum with a capital B-U-M. 
They were also 3 for 13 again, with runners in scoring position in this game. Meaning, for the second consecutive game, they failed in scoring position 10 of 13 times. So, I'm sorry. I know they scored 7 runs, and that is true. We will move on to the bigger issues in 2 seconds. <clears throat> but I'm not ignoring the fact that the Yankees continue to mishandle these massive opportunities to score. Whether it's facing an absolute loser on the mound, or it's not coming through in those big spots. Anthony Rizzo today had a big moment. Nothing. Stanton had a few moments as well. Nothing. But a personal favor is, is the Yankees continuing to have these piss-poor fundamentals that keep flaring up. Unable to do the little things right ever. And that really is the true problem with this team. Obviously they can't hit. But this team's fundamentals are atrocious. I mean, again, we see inexplicable mistakes every night with them. In the field with errors. Mistakes on the bases. On the mound with the box. Pitch clock violations. And sometimes you'll see behind the dish with, with catcher's interferences. We see this shit every day. They're incompetent. We know that, though. So it's no surprise. But still, for some reason, I'm very unable to sit through these same mistakes and just shrug it off as like like I'm numb to it. Because it's just so egregious and untimely every time. And so in this game, you had Oswald Peraza and Harrison Bader screw up in two very important parts of this game. In the top of the ninth inning, Bader is up. He hits the sack fly to score Glaber. But Peraza tries tagging late from second base to go to third, and he's thrown out from the catcher. I know Peraza's a rookie. I get it. And he did make up for it, I guess, to a degree later with the, with the RBI hit. But it was the third out of the inning. You know the rule. It was in the ninth inning, nonetheless. And you're in there on the bases literally because Anthony Rizzo is slow and awful on the base paths. So that kind of mistake can't happen. You're not getting the rookie mistake. I'm not treating you with gloves on. And then an even more unacceptable mistake for a guy who's been a big leaguer for, I think, seven years now. Harrison Bader gets called out on the contact play in extra innings. It's a 5-5 game in the top of the, I think it was the top of the 10th. IKF is up with no outs and Bader's on second base. The ball is hit right back to the fucking pitcher's mound. So it's right there. And Bader, just like every other Yankee has done this year, goes on the contact play and he gets thrown out at third base routinely. Make the read. Make your read. Make the read. That's it. That's it's it's that simple. It's such an obviously it, it's such an obvious read right there to make. The ball is in front of you. All it takes is a head turn, 90 degree head turn from the pitcher, and you're done. That happened. He was done. And that shit, again, it happens so often with this team. I really wish there was a stat for the Yankees and their fundamentals to back up what I'm saying about these mistakes. Like a point system where points are bad and it adds up every time they make an error, they get caught stealing, picked off, balking, interference violation, something stupid, they get a point. Because I, I know, I know damn well the Yankees would be up there on that leaderboard like the low-grade losers they are, if that were a stat. And what do I always say? What does every baseball person say? Because it's so goddamn true, even if you don't want to believe it. Shit like that? Boon fans, shit like that is on the manager just as much as it is everybody else. That lackadaisical, oh, it's okay, it happens mentality that this jackass carries is a reason for these continuous boneheaded mistakes year in and year out, day in and day out. The lack of accountability, instead of shooting the shit straight, he's singing love songs to his guy in the postgame. IKF, terrible shortstop last. Last year, what does he say towards the end of the season? He's one of the best defensive players in the league. That was proven wrong. He was statistically one of the worst. He says the same thing about Glaber a couple uh, like a week ago. He's got the most errors in baseball of second baseman. 
It's it's insane how how stupid they think we are. Aaron Boone in today's post game. Ready? One of the reporters asks him, after losing two of three to the worst team in the National League, do you still believe that you're a World Series caliber team? Aaron Boone says, it's baseball. Major League Baseball. Save it with that question. We got two and a half months to put ourselves in a position to be championship caliber. We got to go. It's on us. We got to prove that. As far as we're playing, as who we're playing, Major League Baseball. You're going to beat some good teams. You're going to lose some series to teams that are struggling. It's a grind every single time you go out there and put a Major League Baseball uniform on. I don't buy into that garbage at all. They outlasted us today. We're obviously pissed off in the moment that we lost the series, but it's a series we lost. And we got to move on from it and go try to play well in California. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, this guy's such a bum. There's one thing to do. Not throw your players under the bus. I understand that. But you can do the whole urgency thing. And you can you can be angry. You can have urgency and not throw your guys under the bus. And not call it over. How about saying it's pretty pathetic the way we're playing. We got to turn it around. That's an acceptable baseball. We can't continue to keep making these mistakes. We had an opportunity to defeat a team who's 20 games below 500 and we flopped. It's Major League Baseball. What does that mean? That's a relative statement. The Rockies are a terrible team. They're one of the worst teams in Major League Baseball. You need to beat them. And you need to know that you need to beat them. And it seems like you don't know that. It's so fucking pathetic. And speaking of this absolute bum, he managed a pretty terrible baseball game today, which is my third bullet point on why the Yankees lost. And like always, I'm not shocked that he managed a terrible baseball game, but I'm still just as thrown off as I'll ever be because it gets me every time for some reason. A little nitpick. I thought I would have let Cole go out for the seventh. He is your ace. It's only 102 pitches, but whatever, I won't get mad at that. And also, I'll give him, I'll say that I liked going to Peralta. Um, I liked going to Tommy Canely, despite him struggling, coming down to earth lately. And I liked to move the move to go to Clay Holmes, despite allowing the Grand Slam. I also liked Ian Hamilton for two innings after that. But the fact that this guy can't go too long before showing his utter incompetence scares me just as much as it as it should scare you. Because after Hamilton was done, who does Aaron Boone go to? Not Michael King. Not Ron Marinaccio. He goes to his number eight reliever, a journeyman, a random, Nick Ramirez, who nobody in baseball knows outside of the Yankees fans, and I'm sure there are Yankees fans who don't know this guy, and I wouldn't blame them. Because he's a random. He pitches the 11th inning of a tie game in a series where the Yankees desperately needed a win. I don't give two shits, one piss, and a pile of vomit what your little bullpen chart says. That little budget you got. Michael King can't throw on this day. This pitches on that day. Blah, blah, blah. When you are in the position you are, July fucking 16th, last place, and desperately trying to stay over a 500 record, for Christ's sakes, you need to start bending some rules a little bit. This was a must-win game. You go with the guy who is actually good, actually decent. And if you don't want to go to King that badly, I would rather Marinaccio. Now, you know it's a moot point because Marinaccio has been sucking, and he sucked this game as well. But you don't go to Nick Ramirez there. And maybe if you use Wandy Peralta for a little bit longer, you don't have to go in this situation. Maybe if you threw Cole out there for another batter or two, you don't have to be in this situation. It's You don't do that. You don't go to Nick Ramirez in a spot like this. I'm sorry. If you got to bend a rule, you bend it. Because what are you saving him for? Because right now, the Yankees are in last place and out of the playoffs. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Episode 540 of BD4. We appreciate you sticking around and listening so far. When you have a chance, 
be sure to open YouTube to subscribe, like, and comment. And if you're already watching on YouTube, be sure to head over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. We appreciate your feedback and are always looking to improve. Now, with that all said, let's get you back to the show. All right, welcome back to the show. I'm going to give Derek Cole, I don't know why we're doing this because I don't feel like talking positive, but I'll give Derek Cole respect and I'll tip my cap to Cole this series. Yeah, six innings, one run, 11 strikeouts. That was awesome. Just one walk, only two hits, the solo home run, a single. Uh, 102 pitches, 66 strikes, and unfortunately did not get his 10th win. Got the no decision. He got the no decision. He looked excellent out there. The swing and miss stuff was obviously there. Um, Yeah, it's a shame that it went to waste. Garrett Cole's prime is being wasted on this team, on this bad baseball team. The, the, the minute he gets that opt-out year, I think he hits the opt-out in, in two years, one or two years, I'm out if I'm him. I'm so out of on him. His ERA on the season now, across 20 starts, 2.78. 123 innings, 134 Ks, only 99 hits. Well, that's that's good. Um, He was good, and I'm going to go to the bullpen. Ian Hamilton. Oh, that's also Cole's 10th time getting uh, respect for me. Uh, Ian Hamilton out of the bullpen. I'm giving my respect. I'm tipping my cap to him. Two innings this series came in today's game. Two perfect, you know, two clean innings. No runs against him. Very clutch innings. We needed him there. And he held it down. And he's, he continues to be a very good part of this team. Two innings, one strike out of walk. No hits, no runs, 35 pitches, 20 of them are strikes. Did his job against the Rockies today. Good for Ian Hamilton. On the year, he's got a 1.86 across 23 games, 29 innings. He's been great. All right, let's talk trades. Uh, I want to make this quick because I I, I really don't want to talk about this team any further, but I'll try to make it as quick as I can. So let's put it simple. It won't happen. So I don't want to waste too much time on this. But it shouldn't have to be said that if somebody like Juan Soto becomes available, you jump on that and you go be the Yankees. I don't care who you have to give up. Dominguez, Volpe, Spencer Jones, Glaber Torres. I don't care. I do not care. You do it. You make the trade. You lock that guy up and get your franchise player that you desperately need. That's right. And the same goes for Shohei Otani. Because I think if they were to trade for Shohei, which I know they're not going to. But in in a fantasy world, if they were to trade him, I don't think they're doing it without assuring they're going to lock that guy up. So if any of those guys become available, if I'm the GM of the Yankees, I'm going for that. I'm going for the kill because there is a, you don't miss generational talent because you decide to. When you have the assets, you have the finances, you go and do that. But again, that's not realistic. I know. And honestly, the, the what I want to do also isn't realistic, but should be something the Yankees need to consider because I think it's more realistic than going for the big fish, which is consider selling off on August 1st because the Yankees aren't going anywhere this year. They're done. They're in last place. They're a bad team with a bad record, a bad owner, a bad general manager, a bad manager, and a bad roster. So in an alternate reality, if they weren't so tone deaf 
and stubborn and delusional, you sell off at the, de- at the deadline. You become sellers. You try moving uh, a Severino. You try moving Bader. You listen to offers for Anthony Rizzo. You move Glaber Torres. You play Peraza every single day. You call up guys like Floreal, Pereira, Rortved, Wells, Dominguez to AAA. And then you finish out the year letting the youth ride it out and you make your moves in the winter. That's honestly what they should be doing. They should be selling because I don't see this team doing it. The rentals aren't going to work. It isn't happening, folks. Unfortunately, selling isn't happening. The Yankees don't sell. They don't sell off much. They just don't. The last time the Yankees were sellers was what? 2016? The whole Beltron thing and you got your prospects? It's very rare. Realistically, what is going to happen is the Yankees will try making much smaller moves at the deadline to try and patch things up, right? Cashman loves patchwork. Randall Gritchick, please. I'm going to puke if I hear that one more time. So if we're going this alternate route, patchwork, probably the best options available is you go and grab Cody Bellinger. You have him come play left field. You go grab Heimer Candelario to play third base for you. Um, I do think the Yankees will trade Peraza. I think that's why he was in AAA for so long because they're planning on trading him and and keeping his value high. But is this something I I want? No. Again, I just said I'd rather prefer the Yankees either sell off or the odd chance that they are in on one of the big fish. I want one of those two guys. But realistically, this is probably the route they are going. So you probably got to get used to it. And these are really the only two guys, plus maybe Arenado, that I'm interested in. Bellinger, you know, guy with lefty pop, batting over 300 this year. Making contact at a, at a very good rate. He's putting it in play a lot more. He's a great defensive player. He's versatile. Can play outfield. A little bit of first base, which might come in handy now that Rizzo is as garbage as he's been. The thing that concerns me with the Cody Bellinger, one, he's a rental. So, again, what you give up is risky, given that I don't see this team making a run this year in the postseason if they get there. But also, he's never been a guy to bat over 300 like he's been doing and make contact at a great rate like this. You look at his career numbers, 230, 260, 250, 230, 100, 100. So I worry about Yankee Stadium and that swing of his, the high launch angle, and I don't want him to fall back into old habits with the swing. And I don't want it to be like a Joey Gallo 2.0 kind of thing. That's what concerns me about Bellinger. Um, again, I'll do it. If they're going that route, that's the best guy available. Sure. Um, Candelario. And again, Bellinger, I don't think he's going to cost any of your top five guys, any of your notable names, uh, because he is a rental. I know, I know, you know, supply and demand, he will cost some, maybe one top guy, but I'm not, you know, I don't think it's going to be a Dominguez or a Spencer Jones in there. Uh, and Heimer Candelario, I, I think that'd be, if you're going that route, a solid option. Switch hitter, who can hit for average at a, a decent amount. You know, 260 plus, which on this team is is batting crown. Puts the ball in play as well. He has good pop. He's a doubles guy. I like doubles guys. He's a good third baseman. And he'll probably come also relatively cheap. I take him. But again, man, if this is the route they go and they get two impact bats of this tier, Bellinger, Candelario, etc., is that really enough to make me feel confident in the Yankees winning a World Series? Is that enough for us to even win 90 games and get to that wild card spot? Which is probably what it's good. Like, listen, if the Yankees find a way to the playoffs on like an 88, 89 win season, I'm not having the slight of bit hope with them. 
I hope you all know that because I don't believe in the crapshoot garbage. If they enter the playoffs as a mediocre team like that, I'm not I'm not confident. I'm not confident. So yeah, that whole floor ceiling thing, I'm 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 like out. I'm out on that ceiling. On that 95 win second place in the American League East ceiling that I had. I'm sorry. I I just anything they do this season, I just don't see them as a legitimate threat. It won't be enough for me even if Judge comes back and plays on his little toe. I just it, it's not going to be enough for me. The only thing that would be enough for me to buy back in is if they again call it quits and restart or to go with the Yankees and grab a fucking superstar. But I just don't trust Cashman one bit. I don't trust him one bit. But if you wait two more weeks, you're telling us how unserious you are. If the Yankees really want to try and make a run here and get back in this race, you can't wait till August 1st, 4 p.m. to make a deal. You can't afford that. You can't afford that. We'll be right back. We'll talk some Sean Casey. When we return from break, stay with us. Be right back here on BD4. You can also find us on social media. If you'd like, you can follow BD4 on Facebook, and we're at BD4Pod on both Instagram and Twitter. We appreciate you helping us grow more and more every day. Let's get back to it. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbo, and you are listening. To episode 540 of BD4, the Yankees lose 2 or 3 to the Rockies. Um, you know, the whole Sean Casey thing, I like the hiring. Uh, I, I've, I've always liked him on MLB Network. This guy with a great personality. He knows ball. He was a career 302 hitter, which, there you go. We've been asking for a guy with major league success to come and help coach this team. We wanted that. We got that. And, you know, he's apparently more of a hands-on guy than an analytics-only guy. He has a balance, which is what I like, between metrics and the art of hitting, right? He knows eye test versus metrics. He knows where to find that line. Uh, and I like that they went outside the organization, although he is buddies with Boone um, from back in the Cincinnati days. But, yeah, I mean, his impact to this team, it's probably not going to be... Anything you see right now. It's more the philosophy of the organization. It's more the roster that Cashman constructed constructed to fit that philosophy. But I do think he's actually good at his job. And I didn't think Lawson was good at his job. And for the record, the Yankee Bats this series did pick it up a ton. They got a lot of hits. They hit it in volume this series. Even in the first game, they, they hit the ball a lot. They scored a lot of runs. They picked up a lot of hits. Um, but I think his impact will be, will be more of a long-term thing. Also, this was the Colorado Rockies with terrible pitching. So we got to relax there. But yeah, I, you know, real briefly, I do like the, the hiring. It's, it's whatever. It, it's nothing that's going to change anything right now. Um, at least some guys are hitting. Giancarlo Stanton is hitting. Three hits in this series, three walks, two home runs, six RBIs. His OPS in his last, I think, 16 games now is over 1,000. The run production seems like it's back. The home run power, the extra base hit power, he's been hitting. So it's good. Part of that, playing some outfield. Part of that, it's always taking him time to find a rhythm when he gets back from the disabled list. This one took a little extra, it felt like. But he, he's starting to hit. Actually, he had the highest OPS on the team entering the game, which is nuts. Uh, DJ LeMayhew, he swung it better. His swing looks like very DJ LeMayhew-esque. Hard line drive contact. He had six hits in this series. 462 batting average. 
some extra base hits in there. Two runs scored. Uh, I'm not buying it, though. I need more. This was Coors Field. You know, it's just a hot streak. Maybe. Uh, you go on Coors Field, you're going to hit the ball because of the elevation and all that. I got to see more. But for the record, he is on a six-game hit streak dating back to Baltimore and Chicago pre-All-Star break. His batting average was 219. That was the low point. It's up to 234 right now. So we'll see. Glaber Torres is hitting. Let's talk about Glaber Torres. As I'm going to give him, as much as I don't want to because I'm not a fan of him anymore, The um, I'm tipping my cap to him this series. <laughs> Glaber Torres, seven hits, 467 average, a triple, an RBI, three strikeouts, four runs, nine total bases, and a 1067 OPS in three games this series. He's swinging the bat well. He's got the average on the year at 261, which is nice to see. The OPS is now above 750. It's 752. 13 doubles, 2 triples, 13 home runs on the year for Glaber Torres. And there are also some slumping Yankees. Um, Dude, I have no idea what's going on with Anthony Rizzo. I don't know what happened to that guy. I don't know if he's injured from the whole Padres thing. That's kind of where this started. I don't know if he's just washed, but he looks finished to me. There is no more pop left in that bat. How many days is it now without a home run? A month and a half? It's alarming. Today, he had that huge at-bat, massive opportunity, with the bases loaded and two outs. Three ball count. He gets like four fastballs right down the dick in that count. That should have been sent to Saturn. And he did nothing but foul them off. The guy looks cooked. Too many guys on this team look cooked. That's the issue. Even if Anthony, even Anthony, Anthony Volpe, he's been pretty cold now. The chicken parm era seems to be over. Maybe he needs another one. I don't know, but he's not hitting. I don't know. Things suck right now. Things suck. That's that's the gist of it. Things absolutely suck. The Yankees have a patch now on their jersey. Star insurance. So, maybe they'll help uh, pay for Donaldson's contract. Uh, Yankees fans are upset. I'm annoyed with it too. It looks gross. Capitalist Hal cares about nothing but his business. The Yankees are his business. That's how he runs them, like a corporation, not like a baseball team. Um, you know, I think this team is garbage. I think they're a bad baseball team who are now in jeopardy of not making the playoffs, and I think that's a very real possibility. So that 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 chance of you know the whole again the floor and ceiling thing. Oh, maybe they can win ninety five, come in second place, and I, I don't see that as an. I, I think I'm done with that. So. Yes, to that commenter after the Chicago White Sox series, I, I officially say all hope is lost. Let's wrap it up when we return. Stay with us. Be right back. Episode 540 of BD4. If you have time in the day or maybe just prefer old-fashioned reading over listening, then you can always follow along and subscribe to BD4 Blog by going to bd4blog.com. We're not on there as often, but when we do post, it's just as entertaining, opinionated, and passionate as we are on this podcast. Thank you so much. And let's keep on with the show. All right. Welcome back to the show. Let's wrap this thing up with our MYY, NYK, MMA trivia question of the day. All right, so for this episode, episode 540, true or false, Joe DiMaggio hit 56 singles and scored 56 runs during his 56-game hitting streak. I think that was a question before in the show a while ago. True or false, Joe DiMaggio hit 56 singles and scored 56 runs during his 56-game hit streak. Let me know the answer wherever you can reach me. Wherever you can reach me, I am slurring my words tonight. 
just tired of the Yankees. So it's making me tired physically. That's it. Later. This episode was brought to you by Anchor. Hey there! If you stayed the entire way through, we thank you immensely for it. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and that you come back for the next episode real soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, download these episodes, and share them with your friends as well. BD4 is a five-star podcast simply because of you. And we'd like to keep it that way. Have a wonderful day. Go Yankees and go Knicks.